Corbis. Hello, my name is Nupur Raj. Welcome to our YouTube channel Corbis. Today we will be talking about how to carry out environmental impact assessment. Let's see first what is environmental impact assessment. Environmental impact assessment is a tool used to identify projects environmental, social and economic impacts before decision making. It aims to predict environmental impacts early in project planning and decision, find ways to reduce the harmful impacts, shape the projects to suit the surrounding environment and present predictions and options to decision makers. The Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change MoFCC, notified EIA notification September 2006. Now we will see why one should carry out environmental impact assessment. To carry out the assessment of any project that may lead to environmental and socio-economic impacts, one should go through the process of EIA to acquire an environmental clearance certificate. EIA is required for Schedule 1 projects as per EIA notification. Now you would be thinking what clearance of NOC is required for the listed projects. So let's see, the projects of clearances and NOC is required at the time of environmental clearance. First one is forest clearance, second is wildlife clearance, third is CRZ clearance, fourth is central groundwater authority, NOC, fifth is forest certificate showing the distance from the project boundary, sixth is airport NOC for height clearance. Now let's understand how to carry out the EIA process. Environmental impact assessment is mandated for Category A and B1 projects as per EIA notification 2006. Category A projects require mandated environmental clearance require an EIA report. Category B1 projects mandatory requires EIA. Category B2 projects do not require EIA. Now let's see the stages of EIA. First one is screening. In this scrutiny, agency will identify the B category project will fall under B1 or B2. Second is scoping and consideration of the alternatives. Third is term of reference. The term of reference consists of methodology, scope of the project, timeline for carrying out environmental impact assessment. Fourth is environmental impact assessment study. Fifth is public consultation and sixth is final EIA report and seventh is the grant of EC which is the clearance process. Now let's have a look on the submission process of final EIA. First is site identification and preliminary site visit. Second is drafting and submission of forms, form 1, form 1A, form 2, PFR, conceptual plan for EC TOR after registration. Drafting of presentation for EC or TOR. Agenda meeting for EC or TOR. Grant of TOR, EC and subsequently baseline data generation by appraisal committee. Preparation and submission of draft EIA for conduction of public hearing to SPCB. Drafting of presentation and conduction of public hearing. Final environmental impact assessment submission to appraisal committee for the grant of EC. After incorporation of minutes of PH, which is public hearing, in the EIA report and submission on the Parivesh portal. Drafting of final EC presentation, agenda meeting for final EC, grant of EC by the appraisal committee. Now we would have a look on the generic structure of the environmental impact assessment. First is introduction which have all the details of the project. Second is project description that includes details of risk likely to cause environmental effects. Second is description of the environment, establishment of baseline for valued environmental components. Third is anticipated environmental impacts and mitigation measures. Fourth is analysis of alternatives, mitigation measures posed for each alternative and selection of alternative. Environmental monitoring program in which technical aspects of monitoring the effectiveness of mitigation measures. Sixth is the additional studies, consist of public hearing, risk assessment and social impact assessment. Seventh is project benefits, improvement in physical and social infrastructure and employment potential. Ninth is environmental cost benefits, if recommended at the scoping stage. Eighth is EMP, description of the administrative aspects of ensuring that mitigative measures are implemented and their effectiveness monitored after approval of the EIA. 
Ninth is summary and conclusion, explanation how adverse effects have been mitigated. Tenth is disclosure of consultants engaged, the names of the consultants engaged with their brief resumes and nature of the consultancy rendered. This was all about the generic structure of EIA. Now to prepare environmental impact assessment report for all the listed projects is very important for the sound management of the project by identifying the risk associated with it. And for carrying out the environmental impact assessment, one can take help from the certified NABIT consultant to prepare a quality EIA report and grant of environmental clearance. So if you are looking for the assistance of certified consultants that can help you with the report or certificate, you can connect with our experts at Corbis with the details below. We help our clients with all environmental compliances related to their projects. Please like and share if you found this information useful. You can also subscribe to our channel and visit our websites. Thank you for watching.